Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister and asks, did he tell the Prime Minister's South Island Forum that the government would, quote, front up with some cash, end quote, for water infrastructure in Canterbury, as reported in the press on 12 June 2010? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, the, the story, particular story stretches things a little bit, but what I can confirm for the member is that the government is keen to see progress on water storage and irrigation. We've been focusing on removing regulatory roadblocks, but under the right circumstances, uh, we would also consider some form of financial involvement in order to get things moving. As I said in my statement to Parliament, we want to make sure that water storage and irrigation projects which meet environmental standards and which are good economic propositions can happen uh, within a decent time frame. Dr Russell Norman. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, does he agree with the Canterbury Water Management Strategy that, quote, even if resource consents could be obtained for new infrastructure on this scale, it would be uneconomic to build, end quote, if so, why would the government even contemplate subsidising irrigation projects that don't have an economic return? The Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, that statement seems to refer to one particular project. I can't believe it applies to all of the projects because not all of them have been priced up. And on that basis, no, I wouldn't agree with it. Dr Russell Norman. Norman. Is he aware uh, that intensive irrigated corporate dairying has already drained and polluted many of Canterbury's rivers and that more intensive irrigated dairying will only drain more water from our precious braided rivers. Honourable Prime Minister. Get, um, well, yes, I'm aware that increasing intensification of dairying in the South Island is having an effect on water, the water table, and that's the very reason why building water storage in the South Island makes so much sense. Brendan Burns. Supplementary question. Was the Prime Minister briefed on the December 2020-2008 irrigation forum in Christchurch attended by three of his senior ministers promoting irrigation for Canterbury? And was he aware that one Wyatt Creech was also briefed about that forum via David Carter's political adviser within two days of it being held? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I have no recollection of whether I was briefed for that. Uh, Brendan Burns. Can the Prime Minister explain why Mr Creech, 11 months before he was appointed as an independent consultant to head an independent review of ECAN, was taking an intense interest via a Minister's office in the same Canterbury irrigation issues as the Prime Minister? The Speaker, Prime I Minister. have no ministerial responsibility for Wyatt Creech. A point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, the question was about something that happened via a Minister's office. And my submission to you, saying that someone has no responsibility for Wyatt Creech, when clearly the Prime Minister does have responsibility for all his Minister's offices and the briefings they give, is not a satisfactory answer. Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Oh, the question was, order. could the Prime Minister explain why Mr Creech was taking an interest? Uh, clearly it's not his, his role to explain why Mr Creech was taking an interest. Uh, Mr Creech, of course, is a... a, a prominent New Zealand who has a great interest in these matters, not unreasonable law. What, I, what I'll do is, uh, on, this, on this occasion, is enable Brendan Burns to rephrase the question because the, uh, to make it clear that, to try and bring it within the Prime Minister's responsibility rather than just losing a question. Brendan Burns. Brendan Burns, if he wants to rephrase his question, doesn't have to if he would like sure, to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Could the Minister say why Mr Creech, 11 months before he was appointed as an independent consultant, had an independent review of ECAN taking an intense interest via a Minister's office in the same issues as he was taking as Prime Minister? Mr Speaker, uh, no. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Brennan Burns. Uh, point of order, I, I seek to table an Official Information Act document which shows why Creech wanting a, quote, comprehensive picture of Canterbury irrigation and RMA issues from David Order. Carter's office 11 months Could before he was appointed to have review the source of the document? It's an official information act request to the Minister's office. It's an email exchange. Leave us sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the Prime Minister seen the latest Landcare Research Annual Report which stated that intensive, intensified agriculture is currently driving the fastest rate of loss of native vegetation since European colonisation 
And if so, why is he thinking of subsidising more intensification in Canterbury with the result that more native vegetation will be lost? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, no. And um, I can't believe irrigating land that's already in place uh, with a form of agriculture taking place on it, but just not to the level of intensification that would be possible with irrigation, is going to affect native vegetation. Dr Russell Norman. Supplementary. Is he concerned that 10 per cent of groundwater wells monitored in Canterbury last year had nitrate levels exceeding the drinking water standard and that converting thousands of hectares to irrigated dairying will only increase nitrogen leaching in Canterbury? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, and in relation to the second part of the question, I don't think the member can actually make that statement. Dr. Russell Norman. <laughs> um, to the Prime Minister. Is he concerned that the Canterbury Medical Officer of Health has already warned that high levels in nitrate of nitrate in groundwater could put infants at risk of death from blue baby syndrome and that converting thousands of hectares of Canterbury land to irrigated dairying will only increase the risk? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, and that's why we replaced ECAN so we can have effective water uh, plan in place. Uh, in quicker than 19 years, which has taken so far, uh, and failed to put a, a, a water plan in place. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister. How much, how much taxpayer cash does he plan to front up for these uneconomic irrigation schemes that can't attract commercial funding? Schemes that will result in massive environmental destruction and put human health at risk, and which are really just another form of corporate welfare. The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, firstly, if the member stuck to some facts in his questions, he might get a uh, he, he might actually get a more satisfactory answer. But anyway, uh, Mr. Speaker, the government could put some cash into these projects if, at the end of the process. It was proved to be that they were economic over time, but there may be some cash flow issues, and that's been the case in previous irrigation schemes. I might add, actually, the previous government actually set up the Community Irrigation Fund, which was also putting some cash into irrigation schemes. Oh, Just this government will probably put quite a bit more into that. Question number six, Sandra Gowdy.